Okay, welcome to session number six, I believe, um, of our conference around COVID-19, uh, young people in isolation. Uh, thank you for everybody who's participated in the, in the previous five sessions. You, if you were on before, thank you for listening to Craig. Um, and yeah, what we're going to be doing today, I'm going to hand over to John Reese in a minute, who's going to introduce himself at uh, this particular session is around parenting in isolation. Um, and yeah, this is just a, a, a great opportunity. We know that basically that lockdown has caused multiple issues and parenting is something that we really wanted to connect in with. <clears throat> and I'll let John introduce himself in a minute. He's going to be speaking for about 40 to 45 minutes and then there'll be Q&A at the end. So if you've got any questions during what John is saying, just please put them in the Q&A section and then we'll, we'll, we'll collate them and, up, and you can answer them at the end. We'll, I'll talk to John about them. Um, just a couple of housekeeping rules. Uh, as always, we are expecting people just to be really polite. We don't mind challenging questions, but if there's anything which we find offensive, we'll just politely remove you. But other than that, um, you are, you are, you, we are open and happy for you to ask any questions you want. Um, so thank you very much. I'm going to hand over to you, John. All right, thank you for that intro, Ben. I um, can't see any, anybody apart from Ben, but um, it's nice to, well, I'm glad that you're all here anyway. Um, so today I'm gonna to be talking about parenting in isolation um, during COVID. Um, I'll go through a bit about me first. I don't think I can actually, right, it's not letting me, um, just click on the bottom. Uh, okay, right, okay, yeah. So um, I'm a therapist. I work with children, young people and families. Um, my main job, I work with young people that have been affected by serious youth violence, um, following an instance of serious violence. I also work with parents and carers, you know, for the, for the same thing, helping them um, when their child's been uh, seriously hurt. Other than that, I also work as a school counsellor um, one day a week. And some other times I'm doing clinical supervision for frontline practitioners who work in um, violence and trauma. Um, I'm a parent myself, um, I've got two small children, five months and three years old. Uh, this time has been, you know, tough for everybody. Um, I'll talk a bit about myself along the way. Um, and it would be good to get some thoughts from everyone else about, you know, questions, but also, you know, how it's been for them. Some of the things that I'm going to talk about today um, has helped me along the way. Um, and I hope it can be helpful for you too, um, or for people, the people that you, people that you know. So thinking about, um, you know, the world that we're, living in at the moment um it's tough as we all know we're all vulnerable to at this time um and nobody has the answers and that can cause lots of anxieties um vulnerabilities make us feel helpless out of control and we're in this state of we can be in a state of fear especially maybe at the beginning of it all i know for me that's when i was first most worried about it most worried about my children why about my parents who are elderly? Why about family, friends? You know, why about work? Um, luckily, in the field that I'm in, I don't have to worry too much about work, but I know there's lots of people that are, have been worried about their jobs, worried about um, their kids go to school or not, worried about family members, worried about looking after someone that's vulnerable. There's so much to worry about at this time. Um, that's just completely taken everyone by surprise. Um, and today we're going to think about how that can affect us, how that can affect us emotionally and how that can make us um, isolate. And especially those, for those that are already in isolation before this isolation has been put into place. Um, we'll think about um, how this instability leads to self-doubt in ourselves, leads to anxiety in ourselves, and that can lead to internal difficulty and that can then lead to shame. Um, 
So that's difficult, you know, it's a difficult time, but I hope that I can bring some ideas and suggestions that can be helpful um, in, all, in all of this. What's important, I think, um, yeah, at this time, for all of us is thinking about um, that, yeah, this is a tough time, but also it might remind us of difficulties from the past that we've had. Other times in our lives when we felt powerless or out of control or worrying about other people and worrying about loved ones. And sometimes we don't connect the two, but if we're feeling like at a particular time really overwhelmed with what's going on at this present time, um, sometimes it's, it's, it can be really overwhelming, but it can be helpful to think about other times in life where you felt this. Um, and that can be good to separate, to not be so overwhelmed with it and just say, okay, this is different now. That was then, this is now. And the outcome now might be different. Um, we don't know it, but it, it can be good to separate. I was speaking to a parent the other day, actually, um, who was saying to me that she was, at the beginning of all of this, really struggling with what was going on and was trying to work out why in particular so much. Um, and it brought her back to when she was younger and she was a child and she was taken into care. So that sense of being out of control, that sense of not knowing what the future held really came back to her. Um, and that's painful for her, but it was really good for her to recognize that and to think about the differences now. And she said also that enabled her to be more present with her children during this time because she was able to separate those two things. And they're difficult to think about, but they can also be really helpful to think about um, as a way to try to um, reflect upon the situation that you're in and to think, um, to think deeply about it, but also to try to be kind to yourself about it. And we're going to think about that um, in this session too, trying to be compassionate with ourselves during this time, which, which you know, can be hard because we can all be hard on ourselves. You know, thinking about, are we doing enough with our children? Are we doing enough here? Are we doing enough there? And, you know, that can, that can build up. And we all know that this is an emotionally exhausting time. And we all know this is an emotionally exhausting time trying to do as much as we can when you know, the children are out of school, we've got to think about them, um, are we doing enough? All those questions that we ask ourselves, it can, it can build up. And if we're not talking to people, um, the self-doubt, the self-criticism can just increase and increase and it may, can, can make us withdraw from other people. So thinking about that, you know, when this COVID first happened, um, well, in the UK, I don't know where everybody is, but um, reading on the news, social media, it causes us to be in this state of threat, fear, panic. Naturally, what we want to do when we feel that is go to our caregivers. We want to um, be with our loved ones. We want to give somebody a hug. You know, that releases um, oxytocin, this love hormone that induces positive feelings. It can calm you down. If you can't do that, then you're gonna, you, it's gonna be, it's gonna feel so strange, it's gonna feel unnatural. So, naturally, biologically, when we're under stress or under pressure, we wanna be with people that we be careful that can look after us. If we can't do that, if we can't do that, it feels unnatural, the stress builds up. It's important to notice when you're stressed what's happening in your body because that can be a really good indicator of how you're feeling and sometimes you can feel things in your body before your mind's actually thinking it and some of the things we're going to do today is try to be a bit more aware of that um actually let's let's try it now um let's try one exercise now so one of the, some of the things that we're going to do today is a couple of practical tips to help us when we're stressed so um it's hard that i can't see but i'll just imagine that you're following what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> so what I'd like to do is to close your eyes, make sure you're sitting comfortably, or if you're laying down, laying down, but as long as you're comfortable. And just, so close your eyes, um, and then just notice how you're feeling in your body, how are your shoulders feeling? 
How's your jaw? Is your jaw tense? Is it a bit tighter? Just relax your jaw. And now I'm going to try a simple breathing exercise where you're going to breathe in for two seconds through the nose and you're going to breathe out for four seconds through the mouth. And when you breathe out for four seconds, I want you to imagine that you're breathing into a straw really gently. So it's in for two, out for four. In for two through the mouth, out for four, really slowly, imagining you're breathing out into a straw, a thin, long straw. And just try that for about, I don't know, 20 seconds. Okay, um, if, I don't know if you're able to, if I could see messages, but if, if that made people feel a bit calmer, let me know or, or let Ben know, I don't know if I can see it or not. Um, got a raised hand there, that's, that's good, I think. <laughs> okay. it, felt, it felt good for me, I'm gonna okay. say. It felt, it felt good, and that bit when you were saying, what part, you know, what do your shoulders feel like? I definitely felt that like my shoulders were, were tense. So that uh, was good to kind of just be aware. And a few people are raising their hands. So that, that's a good, it's a good look. It okay, that, what people are saying that's good. Okay, that's good. That's good. So you noticed it, your shoulders were a bit tense before, but before you didn't notice that? No, not at all. Okay, yeah. that's good. Okay, that's good. So like noticing what's happening in the, in the body and a simple breathing exercise. I remember I heard someone say on social media, I don't need somebody telling me how to breathe in this situation. And I, I get that, but also when we're feeling stressed, um, sometimes that can help us think a bit differently about things or um, um, make us reflect a bit more. And it can switch off what's happening in the body to tell your body the threat's over. And that's the quickest way to do that. So I'm glad that worked for some people. Um, also, try it with try it with children. Try it with the children if if they're up for it. Okay, so um, thinking about different systems that we have at the moment, a lot of us, um, especially before, we're in this threat system. So we have the soothing system, drive system, threat system. Too much of our times at present, not just because of COVID, but also because of other things going on in the world, racism, injustice is put us in a, in a difficult situation where it's upsetting us. And just like what's happening in the world now, that can remind us some difficult things from the past too with ourselves. And it's important to try to know what's going on with us and try to make the red area, which we can get into sometimes, not get too big and get back into the soothing system. And the quickest way to do that, as I said, is like the breathing. But when we're in the threat system, I'll give you an example. At the beginning of all this, I take my children for a walk. I was holding on to the, the buggy with like clenched fists. People coming towards me, I'm trying to dodge out of the way. You know, I'm looking at what they're doing, get out of my way, you know. <laughs> I, I was tense going for a walk with my children. That's meant to be my relaxing time before I start work. And I get home, I'm tired because I'm alert, I'm hyper vigilant to, to threat this. this who knows if it's threat or not but that's what i'm thinking so I, you know and that's the time when i'm meant to relax so yeah it's important to be aware and and your threat system can protect you but also it can get too much it can tire you out it can um, drain you um and notice what's happening in your body and trying to get out of that is, is really important when you're in your threat system you're going to not going to connect with people it's hard to connect with people it's hard to connect with people 
they haven't spoken to a few few weeks, they haven't spoken to a few few months. You start to think negatively about them or about yourselves or about what they think of you. All sorts of things can happen when you're in that system. It's important to notice when you are when you are there. Um, okay, then we start thinking about with that what happens to our thoughts. We catastrophize, so you prepare for the worst. In this COVID situation, we think, what's the worst thing that could happen? And then we stick to that, those thoughts. They might not happen, but maybe our mind prepares us for that. And yeah, that can be helpful in some ways, but it might not be the case. It might not be the worst possible outcome. Um, what's going on? Sometimes it can be, and I know some people are really suffering um, with this, um, and it's really tough. But also for the for the people that are anxious about the future and the future has no, you're not sure about the future yet. It's important to recognize when we're catastrophizing. Um, so that can lead us to think negatively about, you know, how others view us, as I've said before, and, you know, make us doubt ourselves. Um, why aren't I doing more? Why can't I handle this? What does this say about me? Um, why aren't I doing enough for my children? Why? Why will my children be going back to education in the in the same way? It's, it's, well, probably not. But who's who's who is? You know, um, it's it's really it's really tough. So our thoughts can start to become negative, and we start to have negative views about ourselves. But you know, we can change it. Um, we can change it by challenging the thoughts. When we're in this threat focused mind, our attention is focused on. And the negative, you know, on on a particular thing, and the more the focus is on that, the more it grows. Um, the thinking and reasoning that becomes more rigid. The thoughts of being out of control, the thoughts of things becoming bad. You know, it's, it it can be really difficult and really challenging. Um, and then the images that come with that, it could be memories of the past of diff different anxieties, which can be really hard, or imagining what what could happen. Um, all those things are tiring and the motivation following that is to get rid of the anxious feelings um, to find a distraction easiest thing to distract yourself with is your phone next to you but that can probably be negative tiring you see bad news or, or you know your things that make you worry or just looking at your phones not the most relaxing thing in the world all these things cause anxiety um, can become annoyed at ourselves and that leads to the behavior with withdrawing from other people um, loved ones that you haven't seen for a while or friends, you know, family could lead you to not being as present with them or not reaching out to them or, you know, not being able to connect with them in the way you, that you usually do or did before. To try to think about things differently can be really helpful to change the motivation. It's something that I've I try to do, and I hope other people do too. Is to the motivation should be around your own well-being first. How can you support your own well-being, and maybe think about then how can you support the well-being of others. Not to say that it's it's not being selfish. It's about resourcing yourself first before you start the day. If that that's possible at all, can you have five minutes to yourself um, before the day starts? Do you get up before your children? Um, if not, uh, can, can there be time when you get a bit of time for yourself? Can you help someone else get time for themselves and can they do the same for you? Um, if the motivation changes, so can um, the, the attention. The attention can change into thinking about other times if they become difficulties thinking about times you can use as a template for the to the future or you know to to and to think about ways you can be compassionate with yourself this is tough um but i'm gonna you know i'm gonna try and get through this um and that's where the reasoning can be different how you reason with things differently with yourself um you know and it's no wonder i'm finding things tough it's a tough time and it's tougher for other people um and you know i'm not sure um, people that are here with with what's happened but I know it can be a lot tougher for different people um, 
and that's really tough um, thoughts are, are with you. You know, thinking about um, the behavior of others during this time, if you're finding it hard to relate to other people, think that their difficulties are related to the stressful time too. Um, the imagery, images that come up, can you think of someone positive? Can you think of all your compassionate self that can, you know, can, can smile at you and say, you know, things said before, it's tough, but you know, you can get through this. Someone that's in your life that, um, you know, past or present, maybe difficult when it's past, but someone that can be a smiling face looking at you saying, you know, I'm with you, um, or, or yourself, or, you know, um, who you can use if it's to do with your faith, how you can use your faith in these times too. So th this is another exercise um, I'd like you to do. Just a, just a minute though, um, the same breathing exercise as before, um, but just notice, do it for like 20 seconds actually, you haven't got much time, 20 seconds, the same breathing exercise, and just scan your body from head to toe and what you notice. So to breathing in through the nose for two seconds and out through the mouth for four seconds through this imaginary straw. And just first of all, notice like the soles of your feet and notice how that feels against the floor, moving up the legs. Notice like the temperature of the bottom of your legs or your thighs should be different from the top. Notice that. Notice how you feel, stomach, chest area. Notice how your shoulders feel. If they're a bit tense, just relax them. If your jaw's a bit tense, a bit tighter, just relax your jaw. Where's your tongue? Is it the roof of your mouth? Just relax your tongue. And just, just do the breathing. Okay, um, so that's a simple breathing exercise that can be helpful um, by noticing what's happening in your body. It can also be helpful with um, some raised hands here. I think that's, I think that's good. Um, <laughs> can also be helpful with um, health anxiety, but something I talk about. I know the people I've been speaking to have, have had health anxiety because of this. Um, I'll talk about that in a sec. So when you have like negative thoughts, um, what do we do about them? First of all, just try to try to notice them. Um, and this is a lot easier, easier when you're relaxed than when you're, when you're stressed and you're worried about people, but notice them as thoughts and recognize them that they're thoughts and not facts. Um, are the thoughts louder because of how you're feeling? try to think about what could be a more realistic thought or a more compassionate thought, you know, especially for example, if it's about, um, are, are you spending enough time helping your children education on top of everything else? You know, you can only do so much. Phone a friend, rationalize with them, Tr try to do that. They might have a similar um, thought process about things, a similar concern or dilemma. Um, how you challenge the thoughts is noticing different types of thought and thought patterns that happen like emotional reasoning. I feel bad. So it must be bad. Well, not actually true. Um, it might be, but it might not be predictions. We can make predictions about what could happen because we don't know what's happening. Um, again, that, that might not be accurate. Um, a mental filter. I notice bad stuff. If you just close your eyes for like three seconds and try not to think about green cars, you're going to think about green cars. So sometimes when we're in the situation of noticing the bad stuff, this, it, we create that filter. So if you just notice that, it can be really important. Or if you have a, like a negative thought, imagine taking it to a judge. You have this thought, how realistic is it? Would this thought, would this thought stand up in court? as a way to try to rationalize with, with, with yourself when you're having like um, negative thoughts that might not be helpful. 
this is like an example of you know different types of thoughts um narrow thinking narrow thinking on threat we talked about um broadening things up thinking about what else could be going on um speaking to people can be really important in this time if you if, if you can do that um instead of judging and, and labeling try to focus on understanding and being more compassionate with yourself um you know being critical with yourself it, once you're able to slow things down it can be non-critical empathetic encouraging um and really trying to change the way that you're um you know you're thinking about yourself or other people try to think about it in a different in a different way activating the soothing system which we had up earlier so for um you know children and young people in education um it's such a tough time isn't it you know there's lack of structure it's, it's hard to concentrate at home all the things above imagine you know children in this they're in the threat zone too they're missing their friends I don't know what they think about school, but this day environment and lots of kids I speak to are missing just being in that place, being in the environment. And no wonder they're lacking motivation. Could be worried about relatives, um, could be seriously worried about relatives. There's some young people I'm working with who are, who are vulnerable parents um, or, you know, people that are really worried about losing people and how tough that is. Um, it's hard to feel settled and it's hard to think. So it's no wonder that, you know, children are struggling to concentrate. It's no wonder. It's no wonder. It's whatever they do do at this time, that's it's, it's really good um, and really important. So not sure what works for other people. It'd be good to hear at, at the questions at, at the end. Um, but one thing that that has worked for the children I've spoken to is trying to set some timetables in their day. Also, I think that's good. People have raised their hands again. So people, you know, setting timetables is so good for like children, for their structure, but also for us too, if we can, I'm not sure how it works for you. Um, but if you can like for the, for the parents, if you can, put in times of the day where you're doing things for yourself that's really important um if you can but also for the children for all of us if we don't have predictability or routine we're out of sync we need to, if we don't sleep at a certain time our bodies become out of sync if we if we eat at different times in the day that our systems notice that too you know there's night and day we need like a rhythm like a routine once we're out of that it can be really difficult so trying to stick to some sort of timetable that's not too harsh on ourselves um, and that, that puts in things that are, you know, downtime for the children, for us too, um, and trying to stick to that as much as possible. But if we don't do some things, we don't do some things. But to try to do that can be, I found really helpful. Um, and if possible, if you can reframe this time as a, if possible for some people as a template for the future, like can get through this, can get through other things in the future to give hope for the future. Um, I hope that that's possible for some people to try to think of it that way. Um, Self-care um, for, for parents. Um, it's important to be, to, to recognize, um, when you're being being hard on yourself, um, have a think about what what a trusted family member would say about your situation. Um, what would you say to somebody else about about how you're doing? Um, Recognise you know how much you've done um, during this time. Um, acknowledge how tough it is how unnatural it is, um, but you know, that, that you're trying. All the things talked about before, it's in our biology not to, to, to be with people. When we can't, it's, it makes things so much harder um, to acknowledge how tough it is and to know that, to know that, you're, to know that you're trying. Um, a lot of parents I speak to worry about the kids having too much screen time, um, 
but don't they spend a lot of their time on screens anyway with the class with the classes now and you know they need to get through this too they need to find their own ways to get through this too thinking about what you can do for you, yourselves um how much of the, how much of it can you have 10 15 minutes to yourself half an hour hour what, what can you do um if this is possible can you go for a walk um by yourself and you know to take in what's around you and not try to think about anything else um I, it made me think actually working with somebody um in 24 hours a day has to look after somebody in a difficult situation and has some help but won't do things for themselves because sometimes we don't do things for ourselves because we're guilty and i think we can all think about that as parents we can feel guilty about doing things ourselves we need to do we need to keep on giving and giving but actually you need to do things for yourselves too so the person that i was i'm working with tried to get them to do 10 minutes walk by themselves okay how was that how did that feel the person said to me you know what i felt a sense of i felt um karma i felt a sense of like, freedom i felt uh, felt good but afterwards it was difficult but that 10 minutes is good you know that 10 minutes now i'm going to try and build on that um with them um and if if you can build up build up 10 minutes 50 minutes whatever it is hour a day if you can do that that's that's great i'm not sure what people's situations are like but setting in a time of day where it's just for you where it's either um exercise um uh listening to music like you like wh whatever it is connecting with people that you you don't usually whatever it is if you can set aside that time in, in a day or every other day that can be helpful all the things i talked about before are i guess show why it can be easy to withdraw and to isolate when we're going through um difficult times we can start to doubt ourselves and question if people won't even speak to us or or we're going to be a burden or we're going to be you know if we're going through a difficult time um but sometimes reaching out and then noticing how that feels can be really helpful we're going to do one last exercise um we've got to finish it at three but one last exercise before before that and it's based on the last couple that we've um that we've done um so what i'd like you to do um same thing as before it's gonna it's gonna be like for like three minutes so again it's um it's a breathing exercise but we're going to think of a memory so what i was saying before was um we can think of negative things that can make us feel anxious you know can really like feel it in your bodies and it can affect how you are day to day i'd like you to think of um a positive um memory so it could be you know you with friends you with family a good memory where you felt connected so I'll give you a minute just to think about one of those. Could be a holiday, could be a sense of achievement, where you're happy, where you're content. So think of that memory. Hold that memory in your mind. And now, just imagine if you'd have that memory now, what would, if you took a snapshot of the best moment of that memory, what would it be? What would the picture be? Who's there? What are their faces like? What's the weather like? I'd like to hold that image in mind. And just do that, just notice your breathing, breathing in for the nose and out through the mouth, in for two, out for four, really slowly, and just hold that image in mind.
And as you hold that image in mind, try to think of a word that best sums up that experience and what that one word would be. And just say that word to yourself as you picture that memory. Okay, if you just um, come back and um, let us know if that was possible to do. That's good. It'd be good to try to um, practice that um, at different points. Um, I try and do it um, at different points of the day. If I'm having a tough day at work, I just try and do that. What I might do, say if I'm at work, the days of being at work, I just picture a moment with um, my children and do the breathing exercise. And that would make me feel calmer before I go into a session. Um, so I hope um, you know this has been um, helpful. Um, when we're in those difficult moments, um, try to use some of these these thoughts, or try to challenge some of these thoughts, um, and and to reach, to try to reach out to people if possible, and then notice you know how that feels and notice that withdrawing could be a response to how you're feeling, but withdrawing further could only, will only escalate the negative feeling. Um, and everyone's got different situations of who they can reach out to and that's, um, that's understandable. Um, but, but what options are available to you and try to think about that. So I think it's, three now so i think um ben's gonna that was so um so helpful and just so calming and for somebody who has had three children in isolation to even be able to do that i'm gonna um definitely uh take that on board so i think it'd be great just to open up for questions because i know obviously with your psych psychologist background there may well be some people who've got questions about specific issues they're going through so there's a couple in the in the chat already. Um, so one from Nicola, working with health visiting, working with the well, sorry, working with the health visiting team for NHS Healthy Child Program. Parents are our first contact. Mm. It is a strange, tough time. We are experiencing lots of anxiety, and especially for new mums who have mm. just given birth. Are there any specific strategies you could suggest? to support these families? So, um, families that have just had um, a, a newborn um, with less, ne what's depend I guess it depends who's around, what the support networks are existing. Um, and that, I, I guess that's really important to try to establish, first of all, um, who is in who is in this family's life who's who's close by um who's who's trusted and if there are people um but there's no there's no connection there what can be helpful to explore what some of the reasons are um is it is it because um you know people are not available to help is it because people are not available to connect or is it because um 
this person's feeling worried about and they're not they're worried about to reach out to people though i think that's important to establish first of all um yeah. you know thinking about people's mental health mental health postnatal is really important to think about also um and what's what what's around in the community for for that person i think those things need to be explored first um and to assess um you know people's moods or people's people's mental people's mental health um i think there's quite a lot of things but strategies um i hope some of these um would be would be helpful um and i was wondering if there's any um particular websites that people can look at like mind um but i think trying to establish what's you know you can't get connection with people that's the best thing isn't it and um i think it's important to try to establish what's there for people first i think it's a really good point i think i mean i've got friends of mine they've had children in this time it's been really difficult not to be able to see extended family mm. But I also am aware that depending on what net existing networks like you're kind of saying people to are connected with, so whether that's in a faith community, whether mm. it might, um, but even if you're not connected to a faith, mm. what I found definitely in a church context that even if you're not connected to a church, the church would still be happy mm. to provide meals, provide people to come and mm. connect in. So I, personally, I think localized where I live, there's there's different organisations who have just sprung up really, um, mm. who who are really doing a lot for neighbours and stuff. And obviously, there's always a, a nervousness that you're not getting shafted in some particular way. But mm. it, but there's a lot of stuff out there. But I think it's a legitimate question. There's some more questions coming in. Um, what advice do you have for those of us that are working with young people that are anxious about returning to school? Generalise anxiety, uh, health anxiety, etc. Thank you. Great session. So I think that's a great question. I mean, I think um, you're going to get a, a mix of people, aren't you? Some some young mm -hmm. people will be really excited, but if you're anything like me, I'm actually a little bit nervous about re-engaging with the real world. And you mm -hmm. know, so what? You know, any any advice around that? Well. I was speaking to someone, um, it's sort of like linked, but I was speaking to someone that I studied with years ago. He was, um, went on to be a, um, a, a sports psychologist in Germany for a, for a football team. And she works with young, I can't remember what age she works with, but what she does with them is there's a lot of like positive imagery of what you imagine things are going to be like. What, how do you imagine the game's going to be in a positive way that are anxious about performing, they're under high pressure, um, obviously different but I think with children that are going back to school naturally they're going to predict it's going to go wrong or it's going to be bad or what's the worst thing that's going to happen how they're going to connect with their friends again are they going to be going back and not understand they're going to naturally think the worst what well, a lot of children will I think it's important to recognize that first and foremost that they're trying to do that to protect themselves from that happening um, and that can be a good thing but also it's, it's going to be difficult um, so to try to notice what happens to themselves when they imagine um, the negative thoughts about going back to school and then try to notice what happens in their bodies, for example, they start to feel tight chested, they start to feel uh, butterflies. Then try and maybe think about, okay, what would you like it to be like? Imagine that. What would you, what would you be doing if you're going back there and things are going well? And they can start to then think about some things that they can do. Do you know what? I'll reach out to so-and-so. I'm going to try and become a bit more organized and stuff. I'm going to try and do this. So trying to imagine things in a positive way and open up then different ideas. And the more they, you know, if we have an attention on a worry, that worry will grow. If you have an attention on something positive, um, that should grow too. So try to think about some of the things that they can do. Um, and if they are negative thoughts, explore that with them. Okay, what's the worst that could happen? I get to school and, you know, no one's going to talk to me. Okay, ask questions about that. And how realistic is that? What was it like before? What do you think you, 
friends are thinking. So try to explore the questions with the, the young people, the young people, the children about what they predict will happen and then ask them questions about that. Well, then should reassure them a bit. Um, but, but try to help them think about uh, in a positive way about how it could be um, and try to and try to work with that. Before, yeah, but first of all, exploring what the negative, what they think could happen. That's important to explore with them. So that's out there. And then think about, okay, how else could it be? That's a really good idea. I mean, in terms of, it's a great strategy, trying to just predict what they're really thinking and what the biggest concerns are. So that's, that's really helpful. Um, uh, Nadia's got a few questions here, but I'm going to focus on the last bits. And I think it's a really good question. This is something which um, I think has come up quite a bit in the work that we're doing. What can single parents do if they are not able to have time away from their child or children? And then the follow-on part of that, particularly if the parent has a diagnosed mental health condition. Mm. Uh, I think that's probably one of the trickier uh, conversations to have. I've got some thoughts on that, but I'm going to obviously hand over to the expert. <laughs> and, uh... oh, I don't know about expert, but you know, th this is um, something that I've been thinking about a lot, actually, during this time. Um, um, concerned about single parents and mental health issues. I've, that's been something I've been worried about during this time. Um, um, and who who's supporting them and and how are their children being supported at this time um it's it's a it's a it's a real worry um because all the things we've talked about before today um are going to be amplified if there's already underlying mental health difficulties um so that it's going to be so much harder to get out of that threat zone when you already have underlying mental health issues already it's so much harder to 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 reach out to people when you've suffered from doing that and being rejected. So there's so many things that at this time where I worry about um, for people that have, um, you know, parents that are single parents of mental health issues, there's so much to worry about. And again, I think it's important to think about, okay, what, what is available for this parent? Who do they trust? Who does this parent trust that they think they can, as a start, reach out to? As a, as a start, someone that they can they can rely on to give a positive response. As a start, as a tester. Um, ben, you made a great point about about church groups and about regardless of faith, people are you know welcomed in, and that sense of community. And now churches are opening again, and that sense of being somewhere where you're welcome. Um, you, you can't you can't you can't beat that and mm. um, what does what does for your well-being you know with parents mental health issues what mental health support is available to them is a, is a really important question um and then to think about you know the, the child as well um i think it's really important to explore within the community what's there um for that for that parent um yeah, and you know, groups for that for the child. What What are your thoughts, Ben? I, I mean, I think it's a, it's probably one of the most complicated uh, situations. I think it's the it's probably in theory getting a little bit easier now. Lockdown is kind of you know mm. it's not as intense as it was. But I think for me, uh, I think some of the things we've mentioned, there's a, there are quite a lot of community groups out there and a lot of like help whether it's faith groups or community groups out there. Mm. I, like to, I think I'd like to reverse the question, though. I think instead of kind of putting that responsibility on the single parent, mm. I think it's more quite a, a bigger conversation about the communities around us mm. who are not single parents. Mm. And I think really what we need to be looking into our sphere of influence, and there may well be people in our, in our communities who we know who are single mm. parents. And therefore the question is, for those who are not, what can we do to support and alleviate some of that pressure? Mm. So um, I think it's, a, it's kind of looking at it from a slightly different 
perspective mm. if we know those people who are single parents and they may not have that support and we can give them that space even if it is for like a 10 15 minute walk mm. um, i think that is something which um because i think was the big the other question is what about if you're not you know if you're living in a high-rise flat and you mm. have a garden and all this type of stuff which in the early days of lockdown it was really complicated okay mm. Now, is there people who you can place in your bubble mm. who, who you can make, if you do, if you are fortunate enough to have a garden, can you invite them over? You mm. know, that type of thing. And I think it's a more co-designed, co-produced response mm. becomes like a community initiative and not just down to that individual. Mm. Uh, I think that's probably more difficult to, I think if you're a professional, you can maybe suggest, is there anybody like locally you can connect in? with but i think it's one of the biggest challenges i suppose i've got a quick question just in before we close just around how have you found that virtual contact with maybe some of the parents that you've worked with because i know some people or you know it's it's, it's not obviously not the same but mm. is there any kind of uh, challenges or even like positive things where you can say actually it's worked really well just just a little quickly just mm. opinion on that. well some some um, parents that I've spoken to, um, it's been easier because they're at home. They don't have to, you know, come to me. So the, there's not the issue of like um, travel time. They're at, the, at home. They can pick up the phone. Um, can be harder, you know, having the moment for themselves to have that time. Um, but actually, with parents, I think it's been. Um, better actually um and also something shared about this you know um as a parent you know a parent talking to a parent everyone's struggling with this so you, you can only share some of the difficulties um and that can be really helpful so something that i've i've actually enjoyed uh, that part of it during this in this time um there is a, the thing about regardless of doing the work help trying to help people or just with your with at this time when we're not you can have a zoom um meeting with somebody you can have a zoom um catch up with family or friends but it's just not the same is it it's like that connection that you have by being with people is missing and it just makes things you just appreciate it so much more um before how things were um, and that is difficult and it's not that's not the same that can affect um, a lot of things and it's important to acknowledge that so when I speak to parents I, I say that not the same but you know you know here we are um, but yeah so it's been positive in terms of it's, it's, it's less there's no travel time there's people that can a bit more flexible but it's not quite the same it's not quite the same like doing this now i'd much prefer to be with people so i can see people's faces um but you know can you do what you can do i guess no, it's, help. it's really helpful well i think um we'll close there i just want to thank you so much for your your strategies your expertise um i definitely feel a lot more relaxed i, I don't want to be too relaxed I'm <laughs> to the kids to put to bed <laughs> but um I'll definitely be encouraging my wife to be doing some of this stuff. But just to say a uh, massive thank you to you. This, this session will be uploaded, like all the sessions will be uploaded uh, to YouTube. Um, just to say, as I always say, Power Fight is a charity. So if you do feel like you'd like to donate and help us continue run to run more uh, workshops like this and conferences, that you can just go to www.powderfight.org.uk and find our donate button. Um, also, the next session is at 3.30. We're looking at online safety for young people. That is going to be run by Ray Douglas um, for Minus Violence. Uh, it will be another great session. Again, links in very well, you know, what, what are our children really doing uh, when we do just allow them just to go on the iPad, screen time, something that John mentioned already. So that link would have been sent out to you already. Um, but yeah, thank you once again, John, really appreciate it. And thank, every, thank you for everybody who's engaged with this workshop. And hopefully see you in about 15 minutes. Take ben, care. And ben, thank uh, you. And thank everyone for, for being here for it. Thank you. Nice one. Cheers. Take care, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.
Right. Right. 